the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Um, a mere ritual that has no life and no power in it. That it is true, a possibility exists that prophetic words year in year out can become a mere ritual just a church or a denominational ritual that does not have any life or power in it i further wrote here that knowing the lord growing in grace and accessing all the tools allocated for an effective christian life has nothing to do with a new year or a prophetic word that means growing in grace, knowing the Lord, growing in grace, and accessing all the tools allocated for an effective Christian life has nothing to do with a new year or a prophetic word. That means as far as knowing the Lord is concerned, growing in grace and accessing the mysteries, the keys of the kingdom that makes for an excelling life, whether it is january whether it is november whether it is december the moment light comes it has the ability to lift you up so it, it doesn't necessarily have to do with a new year or the end of the year you get what i'm trying to say now we grow and are established in this kingdom every time we access the knowledge of the truth but i did say then and i'll repeat it here that however in spite of the aforementioned god is and remains a god of times and seasons i'm giving you a scriptural basis for the prophetic word that god is a god of times and seasons in as much as he does not dwell in time but he carved out time and separated it into three dimensions past present future to be able to help man relate with him so everything god does with respect to man he does it in time are we together now including his mercy he tied his mercy to time so god is a god of times and seasons his walkings on earth and in the life of the believer i wrote here also subscribes to the law of times and seasons this is true when jesus christ walked upon the earth as god incarnate he did not violate the law of time and season from his coming as a baby in the womb of mary he stayed patiently to subscribe to the law of time and season jesus was not born an adult he was born a baby is that true and the bible records according to luke chapter 2 and verse 52 that jesus increased that means he grew with time the bible is not ashamed to show us baby jesus teenager jesus at age 12 learning is that true adult jesus at age 30 these are all functions of time and jesus himself said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day he added timing even to his assignment when jesus went to the cross and died it was a function of time after three days he came back to life so it is not unscriptural when god guides people within the frame of times and seasons yearly prophetic words reveal god's emphasis to us per season and part time listen very carefully yearly prophetic words are platforms for god to reveal his emphasis god is not doing the same thing all the time he has emphasis per season and per moment 
and yearly prophetic words afford us the opportunity to hear from God and to know what God is doing per season. It also helps us to know the roles that we have to play as far as partnership with God is concerned. It helps us to know the role that we have to play as far as our partnership with God is concerned. And then it also tells us the blessings that come as a result of discernment and alignment. This is very powerful. So when we open up our hearts to yearly prophetic words as believers and more so as a global family of faith, we accept this to mean that God is doing something within this season with us. Are we together now? And we seek to find out his emphasis within this moment to find out the role that we have to play the participatory role that we have to play alongside the blessing that has been allotted for the season it's very very important i have said it here but for the sake of emphasis let me just bring it again that there are three listen carefully there are three dimensions of the anointing number one the first dimension of the anointing as revealed from scripture is the anointing that is within the believer by reason of being grafted into christ by reason of being grafted into christ there is an anointing from the holy one that we have received by reason of our oneness number two there is the anointing that is upon the believer by reason of your call an assignment when god calls you and he assigns a place for you in life and destiny there is an engracing that follows you whether you are in ministry business whatever it is the moment you find your place in life there is an allocation of grace but number three the third dimension of the anointing is the grace that comes upon you by reason of discerning what god is doing within a season so it is possible to have the anointing that comes as a believer it is possible to have the anointing that comes upon your office as far as your contribution to kingdom advance is concerned and yet not have the anointing that makes for relevance per season so it is possible to find out that certain people are greatly featured in God's program per season and when God moves in another dimension this is not backsliding they are still there but not his current emphasis there is always a grace that follows those who can through discernment and alignment understand what god is doing per season prophetic words help us to know what god is doing so that we can release our faith if you're with me say amen, amen. hallelujah so this is very important god has declared to us by his spirit that this is our year of marvelous light first peter chapter 2 please and verse 9 i'll be very fast because um so we can walk with time it says but you are a chosen race can we have kjv you are a chosen generation it says a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people he's describing a kind of people now that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light the bible tells us what you have been called out of and it tells you what you have been called into it says you have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light that means it is the marvelous light that actually makes you a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar kind of people that the prophets before now desire to walk in certain levels of truth but were not granted and that god reserved this body of truth that he calls marvelous light marvelous light means so many things i'm going to explain a few of them now but that we are that generation that have been granted by the spirit and by the mercy of god access to this body of spiritual truth that the bible calls not just light marvelous light 
light in scripture has always carried an expression of grace and power and an expression of god himself there are a few times that the bible connects light to satan and that is to reveal him as a deceiver for instance the bible says satan appears as an angel of light it never says he's an angel of light and then the bible lets us know that historically he was the light bearer the son of the morning he was the custodian of the mysteries of the kingdom this was his assignment before pride and treason brought him and he was judged to become what he is today satan and all of that the bible tells us there's no point going into it and the bible is not also afraid to let us know that when god made him satan the light bearer it was him who was allocated to eden the garden of god hallelujah and many things happened and he was driven out and all of that then man came and the remaining is history but it's important for us to know that light in scripture has always carried um, a positive connotation light is usually not used for anything negative we're going to look at a few of them so that we really understand the implication of being custodians of marvelous light are you ready now number one light according to scripture represents insight and illumination insight and illumination light according to scripture represents insight and illumination in through the truth of god's word every time light is used in scripture it is used to express insight it is used to express illumination Ephesians chapter 1 when you begin to read from verse 15 to 23 you can write it for reference but then I'll just look at um, let's look at 17 for for sake of time Paul is praying now that the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him 18 he says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you may know when the bible talks about light and even marvelous light it means supernatural and unusual access to illumination and insight please say amen, amen. knowledge is very important in this kingdom this is a kingdom where dominion happens at the instance of light and knowledge hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the bible speaking says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee psalms 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods pay attention now and all of you are children of the most high he says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes why because they know not neither will they understand knowing what god has done for you in christ is not enough you must know what it takes to make that become a reality in your life knowing what god has done for you in christ is not enough you must know what it takes to make that revelation true in your life there are so many frustrated christians who continue to jump and say god has done this the bible says this and and they are right but they are not complete because the goal is not just awareness it must become manifest in your life the bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory so when god says it is a year of marvelous light it means by his spirit he is going to be granting us access 
to high level insight and spiritual illumination that means he will open up to us by his spirit the deep things as far as the knowledge of the ways of god is concerned and when you find knowledge then you are already on course for a victorious life hallelujah praise the name of the lord number two very quickly marvelous light means also that god is going to be granting us understanding there is a difference between knowledge and understanding knowledge just means the awareness the information that brings to you the awareness of a possibility it does not necessarily mean that it must become your experience the awareness of a factor a possibility whatever it is is called knowledge that means if i'm aware that i need a mic to amplify my voice that is knowledge it does not mean i will have it and it does not mean i can use it are we together now understanding is the next level understanding is such a powerful miracle you know when you read the bible theologians omit um miracles like the miracle of understanding they don't add it to the miracles of jesus most times when you read the bible and see the miracles of jesus you will see the opening of the blind eye multiplying of bread but you don't see them at understanding but let me tell you understanding is a powerful miracle then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture very very powerful remember the story of the ethiopian enoch after he returned he was reading the messianic prophecy about the death of jesus and like a sheep to the slaughter he would be sent and he did not understand it at all when philip joined him he said understandest what thou readest and he said how can i except some man teach me and he began to expand to him the ways of the kingdom very very important in acts chapter 18 acts chapter 18 um when you read verse um what verse now let me search it here very quickly i'm looking for the story of cornelius acts chapter 18 from verse 24 apollos i meant to say the Bible says a certain Jew named Apollos from born at Alexandria. Follow carefully. He says he's an eloquent man, mighty in scripture. He came to Ephesus. Next verse. He says this man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit. What a description. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But the Bible says knowing only the baptism of John. So all his fervency, his knowledge was limited to the area he understood. The Bible says, verse 26 now, that he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. More perfectly. More perfectly. His problem was not ignorance. His problem was insufficient light and understanding. Are we together now? Understanding is very powerful. It's a miracle. Job in chapter 32 and verse 8. Elihu was speaking and he said, but there is a spirit in man. And the breath, the inspiration of the almighty giveth men. So understanding is a gift. Are you seeing it there now? god gives understanding to men men cannot give men understanding it is god that gives a man understanding may that miracle happen to you in jesus name this is a gadget that was designed to amplify my voice there are thousands of people that are able to hear me simply because i'm holding this device it takes more than knowledge to use it it takes understanding i can give you this mic 
sustaining the power to amplify your voice and ease your communication but if you do not know how to activate it you can hold a mic that is so powerful and yet have the same result as someone who never does not even know that there is a mic you see lack of understanding puts you even though knowledgeable at the same level at a, a, with an ignorant person it is very frustrating because the one who does not know and the one who is just aware will painfully have the same result are, are you getting what i'm saying now it is painful to know what should be and not know how to make it manifest this is the role of understanding what is understanding the fortitude for comprehension the ability to know how to apply knowledge in a way that it profits you understanding answers the question how knowledge answers the question what what do i do you are seeking for knowledge how do i do it you are seeking for understanding most people know what to do but they do not know how to do it i think i've given the example here i like to give example with food because for some reason experience has shown that when you give example with food people understand i don't know why but <laughs> are we together get someone who is a trained chef and get someone who just freelance his way into understanding how to cook give them the same ingredients under the same condition they will produce two different results don't add any extra ingredient the difference is not the ingredients the difference is the combination what makes that man chef is the ability to combine appropriately are we together now yes it is the same bible that the rich and the poor hold it is the same bible that the mediocre and the great hold in fact it may be the same church it may be the same pastor the difference is understanding hundred people can shout amen and only two will have amen manifest in their lives it is not because the word that came from the man of god is a lie amen came upon a head that is knowledgeable but there is no understanding understanding is a real miracle mastery happens at the realm of understanding the bible says listen carefully it says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully it is my prayer that this year god will take us away from guessing just guessing what you think is the way and you can stand with confidence to say by the privilege of god's mercy i understand how this happens are we together there are some of you who are women and mothers here some of you cook for weddings and programs if 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 i if i say cook for all of the people within this large auditorium and all the overflows there are women who will still not be afraid all they need is time and they will cook for thousands of people as though they cooked for only one person they have mastered the art of standardizing their results it doesn't matter whether it's 10 people or 500 people or 1,000 people. They know what to do. May you know what to do. And may you understand how to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Look up, please. Do you know, still using the example of cooking, do you know there are people who can cook for three, four, five people? Once there are three, four, five, that's all right. But the moment they become a crowd, the dynamics of producing the results change. There are people who can drive an ordinary small car. They would drive it with mastery. But give them a truck, the dynamics, it is still driving. Ah. When God gives you 100 members, there is a way to pastor 100 members. When God gives you 1,000, there is a way to do 1,000. It is still pastoring, but the dynamics many of you are unable to enter the next level of your prophetic destiny because you have not gained mastery on the ways of god to know what to do and to understand how to do it are we together you must cry for understanding so marvelous light means access 
to information knowledge marvelous light also means understanding how do you know you have gained understanding when it no longer becomes luck how do you know you have gained understanding when you can reproduce the results indefinitely are we together you lay hands on someone who has some problem in his life and the person returns back with a testimony then you lay hands on another and it looks like the person does not return with a test here and there you are getting miracles but you really don't know what the problem is understanding understanding number three very quickly marvelous light also means access to supernatural direction say amen. amen direction is very very powerful direction is very powerful psalms 119 verse 105 psalms 119 verse 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet and it is a light unto my path you've heard this example and i've given it myself that I, I was and, and and i was talking about this on friday also no matter how excellent and how expensive a car is the moment it is night and it is pitch darkness the most important factor as far as visibility is concerned is not the color of the car it's not the brand and the make of the car it is the level the headlamp is that true and the light that comes from it you can have a rolls royce you can have whatever you know top brands of cars and if for any reason it does not have light or you don't know how to put it on you will sit and be frustrated in a car that even if it is a million dollars you will be frustrated there and there are some of this with all due respect there are some of these are precious people who do town service and community service they, you can see them in a golf but they can add there's something they do to it to increase the light that's not how it came but they they can add to the light and in the night you will see a car that does not look like anything to write home about but it will have the kind of light of a trailer is that true so men may laugh at you let night come you may look small but the factor that determines advancement anybody can laugh when it is day but when the night comes when the night comes it is those who have high level spiritual illumination when your headlamp is alive and active there are many of you you are you are too concerned about the beauty of the car you've not you are seeing the sun go down and yet you are not verifying whether your light is working direction psalm 43 and verse 3 let's hurry up psalm 43 and verse 3 oh send out thy light and thy truth he says let them lead me let them bring me into thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles send out your light and let them lead me can i tell you even darkness from afar looks like light you will need high level of light to be able to discern between light and light and darkness in the days that we live in are we together now direction john chapter 11 from verse 9 and 10 john chapter 11 from verse 9 and 10 jesus answered are there not 12 hours in a day if any man walk in the day he said he stumbleth not why because he seeth the light of this world verse 10 it says but if a man walk in the night why will that man stumble because there is no light in him there is no light in him that means those who downplay the place of light because it is night oh the world that we're living in right now is dark painfully dark
marvelous light means access to direction by the word of god telling you what to do in a way that produces wonderful results in your life may that be your testimony in the name of jesus number five very quickly marvelous light means life oh this is a powerful one this is a powerful one you need to hear this because your life depends on it marvelous light means access to life john 1 4 john 1 4 in him was life he said that life was the light of men that means there is a relationship between light and life jesus the light of the world in john 10 10 said i am come i am come this is why the light came so that you might have life Light did not just come so that you may see so that you may have life and that you will have it more abundantly light is very important and life is important we have so many series we have so many teachings to deal with um this year by the grace of god and one of it we're going to be examining the concept of life not life as living but the bible says if that same spirit that raised christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body you see it tells you that there there is something there is an administration of life that happens to you by reason of passing through the womb of a woman and having blood the life of the flesh is in the blood but that there is a kind of life that comes to you not just because of the blood that you carry but by reason of the living spirit of god that lives within you are we together now and this was adumbrated and demonstrated in the life of jesus himself he had drained his own blood the bible says and took it to perform his high priestly duty yet he resurrected with another life there was no blood and the bible says as my father has sent me you see that now he said so send i you there is a kind of life that he has given because let me tell you this i don't mean to scare you i'm speaking to a global audience but you see this pandemic and many other things i'm not you you, you would not find me just stand and give prophecies but believe me when i tell you this what you see is not all that will happen you just take what i'm telling you as from god you will need more than a vaccine more than some treatment you will need to have a revelation of another administration of life working within you believe me these are days where you cannot pretend that you know this thing the environment will test you marvelous light means access to superior life now it has become a pentecostal cliche when we talk about the life of god dwelling within a man you know it just becomes oh this are no it is true don't feel bad that you may not have attained unto it experientially it still does not matter the spirit of the living god representing the life of god when he indwells the believer there is something there is a reaction that happens by reason of the presence of the spirit that affects your body the presence of the holy spirit does not just affect your spirit alone your mind alone it translates to your body is that true they are life to those who find them and to their flesh their flesh we have to know this so that people don't just walk around and die just because you can breathe <laughs> you will need to show the excellency of your connection with the spirit of life this happened as we know historically in spokane during the days of john g lake that when the plague was killing people it was destroying people that man seemed to be invincible and immune to that plague and when they found out that he understood that god dwells in me 
God dwells in me. This is not just empty bragging that causes casualties. It's a revelation from heaven. Life. Number two, there are things about life that you have to believe. Listen. The Bible says we have been raised up with Christ and we have been made to sit with him far above principalities, powers, when you believe this, you can convince yourself that no enchantment and no divination, whether it is through the water you drink, look at this, watch this. I, I don't mean again to scare you, but someone concocts a charm and drops it. And you come and match it moving innocently. That charm does not just affect your spirit, your physical leg that did not believe in the charm starts swelling. You never confess that I received the charm, yet the charm is working. Are you seeing that now? Someone comes close to you and maybe has a flu, just ordinary flu, and he comes close to you. He does not ask you whether you want it. He just came close to you. You didn't see anything happening. Yet one or two days later, you find out that you also have a flu. There are diseases called communicable diseases. Science knows that far that you can transfer things even beyond the realm of sight. Is that true? These are the days when there will be a kind of people on earth. Believe me when I tell you this. There is the workings of the spirit from within us that will demonstrate the excellency of the power of God. That one day people will ask you, how are you outsourcing your health and your life? And you will tell them. Now, there are a group of people, I'm not by any means promoting this or creating anything, but I learned that there are a group of people called Breatharians. And some of them have, have lived for 10, 20, 15 years without food. They believe that they are taught some way of absorbing energy into their body. And I mean, I've watched videos on that. Literally, they have conquered food and hunger and all of that. At best, they just live off water for 10 years, 15 years and all of that. Now, I'm saying these are people who are not born again. Yet they have tapped into the vastness of the potential of a human body. Life. so that by reason of the high level spiritual illumination that we have medical people are here and i may be wrong but i know that there is something called physiotherapy am i right that one of the ways that you deal with ill health and and Viruses, am I right on that? I hope I don't say what is wrong. You can administer light and it can correct an anomaly in the human body. Science knows that. That there is a relationship between light and health and life. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, by every light. The entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance of food gives vitamins, minerals. If you eat rice, is it the rice you really need? There is the nutrients from it. So if you eat scripture, what really happens? Because the Bible tells us that both of them can do something to you. Hmm. Believers... Let's not toy with our life literally in the days that we live in. You see that? There are all kinds of mysterious sicknesses and wicked spirits have complicated it so people do not even know which one is medical again and which one is demonic. There are people who can have a legitimate medical condition as soon as that one is over, demons just cashing on the pain and continue pain that you know that this one now is no longer medical. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead 
dwells in your mortal body that that spirit can quicken your mortal body men of god if you're a man of god here you have to know this otherwise the burden of ministry will kill you you can you can't hide this thing because the energy will be dissipated people are seeing it can i tell you this i didn't i didn't come to the earth by mistake i will never live by mistake this is this is my covenant with god my parents have never told me that i arrived by mistake there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to separate my spirit from my body out of my cooperation no you have to choose what to believe otherwise anything will just sweep you like that and declare it over yourself by light i i administer life i decree and declare life and longevity and abundance please declare it not the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilence not enchantments and wickedness no exalted above principalities above powers above the ill speakings of darkness hallelujah let me tell you this and i i don't mean to sound arrogant and i sincerely apologize but believe me when i tell you if i were lying about what i'm teaching you it would have shown i have prayed for too many people with situations that you are not even supposed to come near them believe me there are suicidal things you don't try except you know what you are standing on hallelujah i remember years ago a, a family wanted to destroy i think some charms that you know because the person to inherit the the thing was not interested so and there is a consequence for not being interested you know what i'm talking about if it's your turn and you dare make up your mind that you are not interested there are there are there are side effects and so when they brought it they were they put it in a leather i did it i said open it let me see and they were afraid for me i said ah afraid for me when i held it i looked at it these things were all elements of the earth the blood there is it not a, 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 a maybe chicken or goat or whatever it is the coffin that was there and all the things all those enchantments when i held them i said look let me tell you something these things don't just work anyhow there is a condition that makes even jesus knocked on my heart to enter why should something enter without knocking it's, believe believe what i'm telling you I'm not glorifying Satan but I'm, I'm demystifying some of these things the person talking to you is not stupid believe me by reason of what I, I do I have I've seen all kinds of things life life you think is the devil's plan for me to be alive now There are people Satan does not want pain for them. He wants them to die. Because even if they are in pain, it's still a, a disadvantage. The fact that they are alive. Ah. Listen to me. Some of you are even afraid for me. Apostle, don't talk like this. <laughs> Say in the name of Jesus. The life of God is at work in me. Say in the name of Jesus, the life of God 
is at work in me. The Bible describes the believer and he says that even when they take poison, you see that? It didn't say they will go and look for poison and take it. But that when they take poison, it is only when we get to heaven that we will know what we have eaten in this life and the things that we enjoyed that were supposed to kill us. This is what I believe. It is, it, is my, it is my conviction. I do not believe that any mortal man born of a woman can take my life. I truly do not believe it. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body, this is the year when you have to believe. Don't take the risk. Of just living in an evil world like this without knowing these things it will cost you more than you can imagine are we together now man of God you can be traveling from region to region preaching Jesus healing the sick and not know what you are standing on the devil will not watch you raise people from wheelchair end captivities over people's lives and not want to take your own life but Jesus said no man take it from me he said i have the power to lay it down no man take it from me the part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you this is why laziness in studying the word of god is you're agreeing with death among other spirits to destroy you hallelujah are we learning life john 8 12 john 8 12 let's hurry up we have to pray john chapter 8 and verse 12 then spake jesus again unto them saying i am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness please help me read it but shall have the light of life there is light that produces life but shall have the light of life number five marvelous light means supernatural empowerment listen let me tell you believers we are in the days of his power we really truly are in the days of his power a demonstration of the authority and the power of the kingdom in a dimension that will dumbfound principalities and powers and that happens by light supernatural empowerment happening at the instance of light it takes light to reign it takes light to exert dominion are we together now jesus said behold i give you power the greek word is exousia authority over snakes and scorpions and over every power of the enemy and he says nothing shall by any means is what you should pay attention to you have to find out the means satan has bloodline is a means your ignorance is a means and yet the bible still says that you are so fortified that if you have the understanding nothing shall by any means hurt you i give you authority the word power there does not just it's not dunamis it is authority the power that comes by reason of knowledge because the bible says an heir for as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave even though he be lord of all so this is the kind this is the kind of of authority that is demonstrated on account of light to trample upon snakes trample upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you are we together we need power we have a lot of teachings along that line but you need to manifest the power 
of the Holy Spirit and manifest kingdom authority in truth. Kingdom authority in truth. Marvelous light means a season of showing forth, a season of unveiling, a season of exploits. That is the sixth now. Showing forth. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine. How many of you know those are two instructions? You can arise and remain there. He says, arise. Then he says, shine. I will tell you how to shine. To arise is one thing, but to shine is another. Arise and shine. And both of them will happen because your light is come. The same light that makes you arise is the same light that can make you shine. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, he says. For darkness shall cover the earth, gross darkness the people. He says, but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13. Ephesians 5, 13. The Bible says, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. That means in this season, God is going to be unveiling things. Secrets that have kept families down. Secrets that have kept lepatia. The, the puzzles and mysteries that looks like what is the, what is the mystery behind this? The Bible says anything that can make manifest is light. The strength of darkness is secrecy and mysticism. You do not understand it, but light comes to make manifest. Lord, why don't we rise in this family? What is it about this ministry that it does not grow? What is it about my influence, your call, your grace upon my life? And light comes. When light comes, that which is hidden is made manifest. Are you learning now? This is very powerful. So marvelous light means all of this. Insight and illumination, understanding, direction, an end to confusion, life, and then supernatural empowerment. Very quickly, let me run through a few requirements. As you know, everything in the kingdom has demands. Or requirements are we together it is not all up to God and it is not all up to the saint in Christ there is always a participatory requirement now please pay attention this is the role you have to play in making this year become for you in reality the year of marvelous light number one you must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge i wrote it down here you must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge knowledge would not just come and meet you you have to pursue with passion don't forbear with ignorance this year make up your mind i'm tired of this generational ignorance I'm tired of this limitation, absence of light. And you pursue it diligently. And the Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, everyone that asketh, receiveth, everyone that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocks, he says, the door shall be opened. Say amen. amen. So you must cultivate a passion and a thirst for knowledge. Number two. I wrote down here that you must be teachable you must be meek James 1 21 if it will be your year of marvelous light then you must be teachable wherefore 
lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul say meekness can i tell you this meekness is a posture you put yourself in a position where you are passionate about knowing what you do not know and when you find an opportunity to know it you drop away a mentality we call in this side of africa called an i too know mentality those who believe they know everything are the ones who don't know anything you easily know those who know by their passion to know more are we together now what will the word of god be doing in the temple the word of god yet at age 12 he was in the temple learning under people he would one day save are we together now listen you must cultivate passion for knowledge don't come to church don't come to the house of god this year hoping to learn one thing or the other no no you must come intentional ready to receive ready to damage every level of ignorance that you find don't forbear with ignorance don't forbear with darkness have the meekness to learn number three this is very important you must be determined to see the light of god manifest in every area of darkness in your life you must be determined to see the light of god manifest in every area of darkness in your life that means it is your responsibility under god to list the several areas of your life where you desire to see the light and the power of God and begin to probe them one by one the Bible says there was this man called Naaman he was a mighty man a captain of the Syrian army the Bible says he was a valiant man in war but he was leprous are we together now yes this is the year where when God shows you mercy in an area you pat your back in that area but you turn and begin to say Lord thank you for these areas but here 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 and you stay with God until your joy is complete somebody say my joy must be complete this year one more time say my joy must be complete you can choose whatever year but the word is for this year so if you if you want it before you see jesus someday save johnny your faith can take you there but there are people who are insisting that this year this year are we to you must be determined can i tell you this engage the word in every area of your life every area number four very quickly you must be committed to the gathering of the saints like never before this is one demand you must be committed to the gathering of the saints like never before very popular scripture psalm 73 and verse 17 psalm 73 and verse 17 let's hurry up until i went into the sanctuary of god then understood i that level of understanding only happened when i went into the sanctuary of god there is a level of understanding that cannot happen to you just in your private quiet time your place there there is a level of light and illumination that happens when we come together as a family of faith are we learning now you must discipline yourself this year and fight any kind of spiritual laziness and laxity i was glad not i dragged myself i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord hallelujah it is very very important you must be committed you must be committed to the gathering of the saints number five this looks like a simple one but it is one of the major keys major keys as far 
as walking in the reality of marvelous light is concerned you must be committed to speaking the word of god all through this year now light shines in this kingdom when we command it to second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6 light does not just shine it says for god who commanded the light to do what so how does light shine for you you command it to shine that's how god come he, he didn't say god who wanted light to shine god when it has to do with shining you don't wish shining you command shining for god who commanded the light to shine God who commanded the light to shine. God who commanded the light to shine. Light be. Light be. God who commanded the light to shine. Light be. This is the year when creation must hear your voice. Listen, this is not the year to be silent. This is not the year. Pray for me. Pray for me, apostle. I will pray for you, but you must get up and say in the name of Jesus. January, hear the word of the Lord. I command light. You change that light to anything light can give. Parus katiba lakata. God, who commanded light to shine. I love scripture he would have just said God had shined in their hearts but he said God this man who commands light to shine so if your light is not shining could it be that the light is waiting for an instruction waiting for an instruction in the name of Jesus my tomorrow I speak to you you can prepare a triumphant entry for your destiny and while you are saying it let me tell you this satan is the master of the flesh realm he will say did you not speak like this in 2021 what happened master we have toiled all night remember he said nevertheless next time the voice of doubt comes say nevertheless 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 in the name of jesus oh ministry did not rise nevertheless you kept speaking but went down in business nevertheless god who commanded light can i tell you this truly i want you to believe this if you keep quiet I've taught you this. One of the assignments of the spirit of depression is to bring you to a point of silence where your brain keeps wishing for many things that never happen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If Jesus died without speaking that he'll come back to life, you would have been surprised. Jesus did not just resurrect because the Holy Ghost came to resurrect him. He sent a word into his third day to wait for him there. Don't enter into a day that you have not spoken into. Hear me. The Bible says this is the day the Lord has made. And the Bible already tells you how God makes things. Genesis 1. That means there should not be anything in that day if the lord made the day anything he made in genesis 1 was good but the bible lets us know that satan also stands at the corridor of every new day and waits to be able to sow all kinds of things this is the year to declare dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny!
Salas kade baska na kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata bagotos koto breke teke ne kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 